the first Wednesday in the month of June. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. Somebody worship God tonight. Give him the fruit of your lips tonight. Give him the fruit of your lips tonight. No matter how close I am to you, no matter how dear you are to me, I cannot worship God on your behalf. You have to do it yourself. Because when he saved you, I was not there. When God delivered you, when that accident almost took your life, Caleb was not there. Can you personalize your worship this morning? Let heaven hear your voice. We are too quiet for my liking. Somebody worship him. Lift up your voice and just thank God for all he's done. Thank him for everything he's done. For January, for February, for March, April, May, June. Begin to worship the name of God. Exalt his name. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the praise. Father, we thank you, O God. We exalt your holy name. Be thou exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. We are going to pray from the book of um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 8. And it says, the path of a righteous man is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So I want to say to you that you are not permitted to have a better yesterday. Where you are today is as a result of the words you spoke yesterday. Yeah? So we are going to speak words into our tomorrow. What you'll be seeing tomorrow will be as a result of what you're speaking today. There is subsidy, there is hardship everywhere. But as children of God, our past shines brighter and brighter. Our yesterday will never be better than today. Can you begin to speak into your tomorrow? Can you begin to speak into your future? Lack is not your portion. Stagnation is not your portion. The Bible says that your past shines brighter and brighter. Begin to say those words into yourself. Uh, that you get better by the day in everything you do. Uh, your past shines brighter and brighter. You are not permitted to have a better yesterday. Uh, you go from glory to glory. Uh, from grace to greater grace. Somebody begin to confess these words. Uh, speak these words into your life. Uh, speak these words into your job. Uh, speak these words over your children. Uh, over your husband. Over your wife. Uh, that things only get better. Your worst days are over. Uh, things can only get better for you. Uh, begin to speak those words into your life. Uh, I am a Mokosha. Begin to legislate God's word over your life here on earth. Uh, he said, thy kingdom come, uh, thy will be done on earth uh, as it is in heaven. Uh, for his kingdom to become here on earth, uh, you have to legislate it. Uh, somebody begin to speak those words over your life. Uh, God, I am the best uh, in everything I do. Uh, I'm a champion. Uh, I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. Uh, begin to speak in other tongues. Uh, if you can speak in other tongues, begin to speak in other tongues. Uh, let's make power available for today's service. Uh, somebody begin to speak in other tongues. Uh, Make power available in your spirit. You have come to receive from the throne of praise tonight. You will not go home the same way you came. Begin to make power available from your spirit, man. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Just say these confessions before I leave tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody say these confessions after me. Because I have made the Lord my refuge. Therefore shall no plague, no sickness, no barrenness, no stagnation, no lack come near me. In everything I do in life, I am favored. Because grace, 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 this is what, this is my story. Put your hands together and shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come and slap your neighbor a high five and say, are you ready to praise God? Come and make sure you mean it, slap another neighbor a high five and say, are you ready? To praise your God. Make a joyful noise to Him. Come on, come on, we serve a great and mighty God. Let me see you jam, jam your hands together. Everybody.
at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the level I'm going to, you, you need to shift. I don't know what to now do. Hey, that is why. 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 and wonderfully made. Please compliment them as, as they have their seats. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, exalted tribe. God bless you. Thank you so much for blessing us powerfully. You're welcome to church. Please, can you look to your neighbor one more time and tell them something that looks beautiful on them. Tell, tell that sister her hair is beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, you're welcome to church. Thank you for coming. You know, we always say something. When you make out time to come for midweek services, it means that you are ready to chew on the word. Hallelujah. Please celebrate yourselves. Hallelujah. All right, we meet here every Wednesdays and Sundays. On Sundays, we have four powerful services. The first starts at 7.15 a.m. The second starts at 8.45. The third at 10.30. And the last service the last service is a single service. We start at 12.15 noon on Sunday. And then we have a midweek service, one in which you are in. Please, can you help me celebrate the online viewers? Thank you for joining us online. There is no distance in the realm of the spirits. The same power that is available here is going to meet you at the very point of need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, what is changing the world at the moment? No, I can't hear you. What is changing the world at the moment? NLP, the next level prayers, anchored by our own, our very own pastor, Pastor Bola Jido. It's been a phenomenal time in God's presence. You know, there's been diverse testimonies, there's been breakthroughs. God has, God has just manifested himself through NLP. And I want to encourage you to make our time daily, you know, 6.30 a.m. Join, pray, you know, just stay on the word. Feast on the word and see how your life will change like day and night. Hallelujah. We have NLP London that is coming. The NLP London conference. How many people are aware of the NLP London conference? Okay. We have a conference on the 1st of July. Do well to invite your family and friends, your neighbors, people that are jackass. You know, everyone who has gone, who has gone abroad, who is in the UK, you know, around the vicinity. Invite them to come for NLP London and just sow a seed. That seed you're sowing into their life will go a long way in transforming them. Praise God. It's time to pray. Ah, no, there's no excitement. It's time to pray. Yes, yes, yes. Please look to your neighbor and tell them it's time to pray. It's time to exchange weaknesses for strength. Please, can you stand up on your feet and, as we pray together? Hallelujah. Whenever it's time to pray, I just want us to be excited. You know, that's when... Yeah, that's, that's, you're just excited to exchange weaknesses for strength. You're just excited to, you know, ask God for something. You're excited to thank God for something. So whenever you hear it's time to pray, celebrate. Celebrate. It's time to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to start by thanking God. 
Okay, the Bible says we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We should enter his courts with praise. So I need you to lift your voice and bless the name of the Lord. I need you to just give him the fruit of your lips tonight. It's an opportunity to thank him. You are in God's presence. You are in the sanctuary. You are not in the mortuary. Nobody is coming to identify you. Nobody has called you to come and identify a loved one. But you are here today. You walked into this place by yourself. You can lift up your hands. You are breathing. You are not even asking for oxygen. I need you to thank God. Open your mouth, child of God, and celebrate the king. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. You are good and you are merciful. You are kind. You are gracious unto me. You have remained faithful. You are God all by yourself. I am grateful. Ten thousands of words are not enough to give you praise. If I roll from down till morning, it's still not enough to pay for the breath that I breathe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because today your word is coming. Your word is coming forth and it is transforming me. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We come like a two edged sword. It will sharpen, it will break, it will let me break all limitation. Thank you for your manifest presence, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we are going to pray. We can see all that is happening. And you know, it has the tendency of changing your mind or making you doubt what God has set for, set for you. Media, please help me. Leviticus 26, verse 4. Quickly, media, please help me. Then, no, Leviticus 26, 4. Then I will give you rain in due season. That's what that scripture says. I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield an increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruits. You are going to declare concerning yourself, Lord, this is my due season. I walk in 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 my due season. There are no limits for me. Nigeria may be saying something else, but concerning me, concerning me, I walk in due season. Open your mouth, child of God, and declare. Do not look at the economy or the price of things. We lift up our eyes and gaze at Jesus to do all good things. This is my due season. I walk in my due season. If you have a prayer now, wait, begin to activate this. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me just try to lay some context to it. Today I was praying. I was saying, Lord, I'll be praying. And I want, I want a word for your people. And he led me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 3. Normally we would say, Peter and John were walking to the temple, right? And there was a man who was lame from his mother's womb, right? And the man was looking to seek for arms. And Peter and John said to him, silver or gold I don't have. You know the insights the Holy Spirit gave me? The insight the Holy Spirit said, he said, several times believers have walked by their benefactors. Several times they have walked by the people that are meant to lift them to the next level but all they are looking for is arms they are not able to see that they can get much more they are not able to identify that there is something inherent to the man that he can give other than the arms, the crumbs we are looking to seek many times you have walked by that company that is supposed to lift you to your next level but all you are asking is just give me a job we are going to decree and declare, Lord, open my eyes, activate my mouth, let me see the dictates of your heart, let me understand the things you want me to ask for, let me understand what you want me to know, open your mouth and declare, child of God, I do not ask for crumbs. I have insights to your spirit. I 
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still praying. The book of Joshua was a, is a book filled with instructions. Joshua chapter 1, media, quickly, verse 3. You know, Moses had just died. And God was speaking to Joshua. He was telling, giving him exact instructions on what to do. Joshua chapter 1, media, quickly, please. Ah, so ready. Nakabadada. Every place. Please go back to verse 1. Verse 1. Ako. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake called to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Moses' minister, saying, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over Jordan. See, the person that may have been admission over your life must have been dead. But the voice of God is constant. You listen to the voice of God, you get instructions on what to do part time. Now, he says, and all these people are also the land which I give unto you, even the children of Israel. Verse 3. Ha! Hey, the Bible, see, this is the instruction. It says, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you all. See, everywhere your step takes is for the taking. Wherever you show up, everything, everything just aligns in your favor. You are going to degree. I walk, I walk according to your steps. I know what to do. I incline you by ears to your instruction. Open your mouth and degree, child of God. I do not miss walk. I walk according to your teachings. I walk according to your dictates. I give you five more seconds. I increase on all sides. I listen to your dictator. I align to your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we want to thank you. You are good and you are kind. Before the foundation of the earth, you knew me. <laughs> Father, I want to thank you because all you are doing is for my good. The smell that we smell is the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. Father, we give return all the glory to you. Because we know we live here with countless testimonies. Ah, the cloud is full. It must pour down rain. This is the confidence we have in you. That whenever we call upon you, you answer, you are Jesus, the doer of good things. We return all glory to you. For in Jesus, much less name we pray. Amen. Please be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. My friend is really struggling with his business. How can he grow and scale up? Basically, when people struggle with their business, is a life of entrepreneurship. Just for your information, 50% of all businesses die within the first two years of existence. But the question is that if you are struggling with your business and you want to grow your business, you want to grow your profitability, what do you do? There are three ways to grow your profitability or grow your business. The number one way you have to do that is this, by expanding the number of customers that you have. If you currently have 50 customers and they are giving you $20,000 every year, if you move those customers from 20 to 40, you could increase your income from 20,000 to 40 or 50,000. Just imagine if you learn something that can make you go from 20 customers to 100 customers, that potential income could rank up to 100 to 150,000 dollars. The second way you have to really increase your business of profitability is actually to get your customers to buy from you to increase the frequency of sales. So if one customer eventually is selling, is buying from you and is buying just $100 worth every month, if you can make, do something with that customer buys 300, 400, even though you still have the same 20 customers, your profit will go up, your business will grow because it's buying multiple times. The third thing is what I'll be sharing with you at the business acceleration cost. And it's designed for entrepreneurs that want to grow their business, want to learn the, the cutting edge of their business. The opportunity for you to pitch your business to investors that will bring you a huge sum of money and help you to scale. If this is what you want to do, register in my bag.
name is Okoye Niyadibo. I've been looking for the foot of the woman for 16 years. So a friend of mine introduced NLP to me at 2001. So when Pastor Balaji asked us to download or save what we want from God, that we should print out what we really want from God as a point of contact. So I went to Facebook to I wanted to save twins picture. I have twins already in my mind already because I've been waiting for 15 years. I said I want twins. I don't want anything less than twins. So on that morning, I couldn't find twins picture. So I saw triplets picture. I was like triplets. Okay, let me save it. I saved the picture, the triplet picture. I saved two girls and one boy. At that date, anytime you ask us to bring out our point of contact. I'll click on the picture. I'll just turn the picture and say, God, remember me. Grace, grace, grace. Let me just say, grace, grace, grace. This is my story. Let your grace speak for me. Let your mercy speak for me. And today, I have triplets. Exactly the picture of what I see. 2001. There are two girls and one boy. Hello. That's one of my girls. Atta. And the boy. Hello. Grace, grace, grace. This is my story. Somebody shout grace. Shout grace. Shout grace. Say, this is my story.
This is raise your voice this evening. Ayana Kosi Ani Ejana Rosh Eyama. Nothing else matters. You'll never need me, Jesus. That is a promise that you made us from the beginning of time. Tell the president you've got to pray with me. Ayana Kosi Ani Ejana Rosh Eyama. Hey! the covenant keeping God just a church we say you are the covenant keeping God just raise your voice in here let, let hear the your voice come on say yes. you are the covenant if you know that he is the covenant keeping God only in your life say he is hey. the covenant keeping God he is known and has seen your renting before your beginning yes, sir. come on let me hear yeah. you say it Raise it, raise I it, raise cannot it. hear you. If this is for my you father, are, then I are, want more are, than that. You are. You are. Hey, you are. To me, to my family, you to the church, are. to the world. From the soul, to the body, down to the mind. You are. Hey. You are. Just raise it up. Say it up. What will you do? I can. Come on, church, raise your voice to the heavens, let them hear you. All fear is good. I am no see Oh, because I know. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I see an ocean. My life is worth
are those who rise up against me. And there are those who say unto my soul, what is the help for me in God? But for God, oh Lord, oh my Sabbath in my pen. Oh, I listen to God. You are my glory. You live. A song in my spirit that I want us to sing is in my local dialect. Mr. Abbe, please come and help me. The song says, It means we can't impeach him. Hey! Your reign excites me. Kasita Malikete Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can't impeach him. Yes, sir. Over your business, we can't impeach him. Over your health, we can't impeach him. Yes, Keep running. Keep running.
just lift up your hands wherever you are online in any of the campuses just lift up your hands oh father we bless you this evening we thank you because you are a faithful God we thank you for how far you have brought us we know it's not by our power neither is it by our might but it's by your grace that has kept us till today father we are here for you this evening we receive revelation knowledge we receive insight lord do what only you can do hey in this auditorium do what only you can do online do what only you can do what special miracles this evening in the name of jesus let lives be transformed in the name of jesus in jesus name we have prayed come on look to your left look to your right welcome someone to church if you are online you can as well just tag someone say hello to someone online as well anywhere you in the world just say hello to someone glory be to jesus oh come on glory be to jesus it's so good to be in church this evening are you excited to be in church this evening hallelujah and i'm super super excited about what we are teaching about in this month which says satan do what get lost satan word get lost and you know pastor bola just started with us on, on, on Sunday, can you please just celebrate my man of God, my father, Pastor Bola Gido, you know, he started with us and I will just be taking it from there this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just tell someone fast in your seatbelt? Because we're about to go on a ride. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. This evening, I will be teaching on the topic, Unleashing the Believer's Authority. Oh, come on, I thought you were going to be excited at the word of God. Unleashing the believer's authority. Before I go on, if you're online, you might just want to share the link with, you know, your friends. If you're here as well, if there are some of your friends that are not here, you want to share the various links with them on YouTube, on Instagram as well, because it's going to be powerful this evening. Ah, yeah, yeah, I can tell you. Hallelujah. Unleashing the believer's authority. Glory be to Jesus. Can we open our Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, in verse 1? Yes, that's Bagada. Can I have the Amplified? Matthew 10, 1, and we're going to read verse 8 as well. Look at this. Bible says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them what? Oh, come on. And gave them what? Authority and what? Power. Over what? Unclean spirits. To cast them out. He didn't give them the power to be their friends. He didn't give them the power for them to, to be discussing. He gave them the power to do what? Cast them out. And to heal every kind of disease. And every kind of sickness. Verse 8. Verse 8. It says, heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. Why? Freely you have received. I've come to tell you this evening that everything that has been said to the disciples, go back to verse 1, Matthew. Everything, yes, go back to verse 1. That everything that has been said to the disciples in Matthew 10 in verse 1 as is the same authority that has been given to you. It's the same authority. You know, a lot of us, we have, you know, in our homes and everywhere around the world, in our homes, we have electricity company that supplies us power. Am I right? But when you get home this night, if it's night where you are, if you get home this night and you sit in the dark without flipping the switch, is it the fault of an electricity company? No. And that's why there are situations in our lives that we have permitted to happen simply because we have not flipped the switch. There is a way your business is going and you are sitting down moping in the dark room despite the fact that there is electricity simply because you have not flipped the switch. There is something happening in your health and you are mopping around it. In fact, you are, you are going on Google to check simply because you have not flipped the switch. 
Let me tell you, if you're in the dark room and a friend steps in, the first question the friend will ask you is, why is the light not on? Why? Because I checked in the neighbor's place, there is light, but you have not what? Flip the switch. And part of your authority, which is similar to what you have in your house, is to get up, go to the switch, and flip it. The level of your career is where it is. And you can see that it's not moving from where it is simply because you have not flipped the switch. Following on the scriptures that we have read, God has given us what? The power. He has given us what? The authority. It's only left for us to do what? Take it. Because the power is there. You don't expect God to come down and come and flip the switch for you over that business. You don't expect God to come down and come and flip the switch for you over that career, over that health, over that, that delay that you ex you've been experiencing for years. It's in your own right. It's in your own place to get up and flip the switch. Bible says when the enemy comes, that when the enemy comes, that like a flood, we will raise the standard. How many standards have you raised over what you're going through? A lot of us can talk to people. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can cry. We can, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not discounting the things that you're doing, but it's time for you to take authority and raise the standard over these things. Somebody say, flip the switch. Oh, come on, make it louder. Say, flip the switch. See, I may be wrong, but I believe strongly that some of the delays that we experience or, 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 or answered prayers is asking God for the things he has given us authority already. He's asking God to do things and he's wondering that I've given you the authority. Look at what we read in Matthew 10 verse 1 and verse 8. He says I've given you the authority. If you don't do it, nobody's going to do it for you. Hallelujah. Bible says in Luke 10, 19, I like this so much in the Amplified. He says, listen carefully. Luke 10, 19. Yes. He says, listen carefully. Oh, glory be to Jesus. I have given you what? Authority that you now possess. So, it's not like you are going to get into it. You have it already. To do what? To tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise this authority over all the power of the word enemy, Satan. And nothing will in any way harm you. What are the powers of the enemy? That job that you're looking for is the power of the enemy. You have the authority. That business that is not moving forward is the power of the enemy. You have the authority. That health uh, that you spend so much money on uh, is the power of the enemy. You have the authority on it. Uh, that child uh, that you're looking at, that God has been married for years, I don't have a child yet, uh, is the power of the enemy. And you have the authority on it. You just have to do what? Flip the switch. And unleash your authority on it. Enough of we functioning in powerlessness. Are you with me? Enough of we acting in powerlessness. You go to the job and you, are, and you are moping. When you are to release power over it. You get an email, you begin to shake. When you are to do what? Release power over it. Enough of powerlessness in our life. Enough of we acting as if we do not have the authority over your marriage. Enough of we acting powerless on it. Can the devil hear your voice and scamper? Glory be to Jesus. Can the devil look at you and say, ah, this person has woken up. But hey, when you wake up, even the devil is like, let's, let's see. Let's see what he has to say today. No. You have the power. You have the authority. You need to shout on some things. Does the devil know the time you pray? Should we go there? Does he know that you have started praying? You know, I, I, remember, I remember growing up, you know, myself and my elder brother, we, we used to go to one of my auntie's house. Is that real? Glory be to Jesus. 
you know, we used to, let's come back to church. We used to go to one of my auntie's house. And we knew that she always comes back between 4.30 and 5 o'clock. Standard. And this was years ago. It's not like now that <laughs> it can change because of traffic in Nigeria. And we knew that she used to come, you know, please let's focus. I know you have clothes on the line, you know. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Glory be to Jesus. So, you know, I know that. We knew that she would always come between 4.30 and 5. It never changes. But this particular day, she came around 3 o'clock. And, you know, growing up, we're in our tents and, you know, and, you know, me, I was the smallest then. I wasn't like this back then. And I was on the tree, almond tree, plucking fruit. And as I was on the tree, you know, I was plucking the fruit, throwing it down, and suddenly we just had our own. Everybody disappeared and left only me on the tree. Chai. And, you know, I couldn't come down by myself. You know, I needed support to come down. And I was on the tree. And she went into the house, you know, everybody, you know, you know that kind of, you just take your place. The person washing plates, the person, you know, arranging the house, just take your place. And I was on the tree outside the house. And as I was on the tree, my brother was in the kitchen washing dishes upstairs. And he was looking at me on the tree. I was looking at him. He was looking at me. I was looking at him. He was looking at me. And, you know, you know that look that you can't talk, that, man, we are finished. And she started, where's Damilola? Damilola da. Where's, nobody could talk. But at a point, they summoned the courage to say, <laughs> Baba is on the tree. And she came down. She said, what are you doing there? And I said, we were plucking fruit and everything. She said, come down. And she helped me down. The rest is story. Let me tell you what I'm trying to say here. The fact that she came, we knew she was around. My question to you is this. Does the devil know when you come? Most of the testimonies you hear on Next Level, I don't know if you have heard it, you heard things like, immediately Pastor Bolaji declared it, it happened. See, don't you know they know that we pray from 6.30 to 8 o'clock? Question, they know we pray. Does the devil know that you pray? And that is where this authority begins to start from. You need to know that there's a way you wake up, everybody scatters. There's a way you get up. They know that, hey, don't get close. Because why? Shola is awake. And they know that when you are awake, no mess comes around you. My brothers and my sisters, that is where this authority we are talking about comes from. But hey, they know that when you wake, that's when you start nagging. No, enough of you complaining, enough of you nagging. It's time for you to pray, sir. Have you not heard testimonies of one chance? And you hear that it was during next level. We still had one last week. That as next level was happening, I was praying. It was next level, and this happened. Can the devil know that you are speaking, sir? Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Can you call forth that email in the place of prayer through your authority? Why? Because the heavens have supplied you with the power. And what is left for you is to what? Take action. Glory be to Jesus. Colossians 2, verse 14. Colossians 2, verse 14. Look at this. Bible says, Having cancelled what? Out the certificate of debt. Give me New King James. New King James. Having done what? Wiped out all the handwriting of requirements that was against us. What happened? Which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way. Having done what? Nailed it on the cross. Next verse. Having disarmed what? Principalities and powers. He made a what? A public spectacle of them. Why? Triumphing over it. See, they are powerless. Ah. They've been disarmed. Have you watched when, when, when armed robbers are caught? 
You see the way they just put all their arms in front and they put their hands at the back and they're just looking. That is how it is. But you function as if they still have a lot of power. Let me tell you this evening that they are what? Powerless. Whatever has troubled you till today, they are powerless. You just have to take your place. Hey, you just have to take your place. You just have to flip the switch. And that's why he loves Psalm 24 so much. He says, lift up your head, O ye gates. Uh, be lifted up, the everlasting Lord. Why? For the king of glory to come in. Uh, you're going to look at your womb uh, and say, lift up your head, O ye gates. Uh, you look at your career, you say, lift up your head, O ye gates. Uh, you look at your business, you say, lift up your head, O ye gates. What are gates? Things that have, that you know what a gate is. I don't have to start preaching what gate is. You look at the gate. See, some of us will get home today. The, the anger that you, you used to get home, you will say, where are the gates? You look at your laptop. You say, lift up your head, oh, you gates. Why? Because there are some proposals that you have sent out that you have not gotten receipt for. Because there are some rejection. You open your email. You say, lift up your head, oh, you gates. Why? I have come. I've permitted you for so long. It's time for us to turn things around. Somebody say, lift up your heads. Oh, lift up your heads. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you three ways to unleash authority. Three ways to unleash authority. Number one, you must believe. Somebody say, believe. Somebody say believe. See, when you don't believe in the authority you want to unleash, you are just, you are just talking. And I think the best way to, you know, make you believe is to set the scriptures. Mark 11, verse 23. And I'm going to read. Bible says, For as surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed, and cast into the sea, and does not what? Doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will come to pass. Let me tell you something. You are a king, and a king cannot second guess himself. There is kingship in you, and you can, you can second guess yourself. The times of you second guessing yourself is gone in the past. You need to say yeah, that mountain be removed. Mountain, cast out. And you know, the Bible says as well that whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. These are the words that, that calls forth your authority in Christ. These are the words that, that calls forth the authority in Jesus Christ as a believer that you are. But hey, it's been so long, you are just there. He says, you don't doubt in your mind. And shortly, you know, another scripture says that, that if you believe that the same work that he did, that you will do, you just have to believe in your authority, guys. Friends, you just have to believe in your authority. I know that it might sound like, oh, it's not as easy as it is, but you just need to tell yourself, I'm going to believe in this authority that I carry. Bible says they that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. The exploit is you are not doing is, to his, is, is clearly tantamount to the understanding of the Jehovah they are serving that you don't know. Oh, say I will believe. Oh, say it again, say I will believe. Number two, you must be bold. I, you must be bold. 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 Hey, see, those things there, eh, hey, they are not, they're not what you just speak some English to and you go and sit down. No. No. There are some things that come around you that you go and look for cane and flood. There are some things that will come around you. You are going to look for correct belt and flood. Which one do you want to wield out for what you are going through? Because see, the level you are is the level of the power in you that you have not exercised. You must be bold. Philippians 2 in verse 9. Bible says, therefore, okay, therefore, yes, wherefore, God also 
have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Next verse, which is my focus. That at the name of Jesus, somebody say the name of Jesus. If you're online, type the name of Jesus. See, you're going to look at some situations and say in the name of Jesus. But hey, leave the verse. We have bastardized the name. We see cockroach, name of Jesus. You see hands, name of Jesus. No, you look at the situation face to face uh, and you say, in the name of Jesus, what will happen? Every knee should bow. It didn't say some knees will bow. It didn't say some knees in Lagos. It didn't say some knees concerning finance, but the one on earth will not bow. No, it says every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and the things under the earth, which means where them day at the name of what? Jesus. We're not saying, hey, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. No. You look at the situation. You see the way, see, you have been bold to some things. You need to be bold to the situations around you. And you're saying, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is power in that name, friends. You have not used that name and it does not finish. You just look at it and say, in the name of Jesus. You need to be bold. You can't say in the name of Jesus and be jittery. The same way in this world, uh, you will go somewhere and say the IG or a senator or the governor said I should give you this. No, and you see the boldness that comes with you. You say in the name of Jesus. Barrenness in the name of Jesus. Poverty in the name of Jesus. Cancer in the name of Jesus. Joblessness in the name of Jesus. PCOS in the name of Jesus. Delayed marriage in the name of Jesus. Oh, say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, say in the name of Jesus. You need to be bold when you say that. You need to be bold. Number three, you must be brutal. And I'm going to spend some time on this. You must be what? Brutal. And by this, I'm not saying bring knife and bring this thing. It's you attempting not to disguise. It's you telling yourself that, hey, 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 enough. See, that it's at this point we draw the line. It has been happening. It happened on my mother, on my grandmother, on my auntie, on my this. But today we do what? We draw the line. You have to be brutal. In exercising your authority, you have to be brutal. James 4, in verse 7. Bible says, therefore, hey, submit yourself, therefore, to God. What did he say? Resist the devil. Hi. He says what? Resist the devil. He didn't say communicate with the devil. He didn't say... Uh, engage the devil. He didn't say send the devil a text message. No. He says what? Resist. Give me message translation. Oh, you will like this. Hi. Message translation. He says, so let God work his will in you. Yell a loud word. No. Those things that you are massaging, you are looking at it, you are like, ah, if you like, you should go. If you like, you don't. No! You are going to yell a loud no to it. We are good yelling a loud no to our children. <laughs> they didn't cause the trouble. Though. We are okay yelling a loud no to our husband. And they learn me. We are good yelling a loud no to our wives. We are good yelling a loud no to people around us, to our neighbors. Question. Have you yelled a loud no to the devil? Think about it. The things you are praying about in this year 2023 that should not be as it is. Have you yelled a loud no? And see, this is not, oh, I go home and I say no. No! If it is a document, you throw it on the floor. <laughs> Whatever it is, you put it down. That today, we draw the line. I don't know whatever it is. If it is in a place that you need to travel to, 
you will buckle up and you will go there. Why? We are yelling a loud no, sir. In your office, you keep saying, oh, they don't like me. They this. You are now saying, oh, because of that, let me just start looking for another job. No. They resume at 8 o'clock. You go at 6.30. That this place will yell a loud no, sir. You are in a place you can't talk because they are saying some things not favorable to you and you are just there sitting down. Can you say, can I just go to the toilet? Why? I need to go and yell a loud no, sir. You receive an email, you begin to shake, and you are thinking, can you yell a loud no? See, that is not the time you are now looking for your phone to send to your pastor and say, pastor, start praying. No. <laughs> say, pastor, start praying. I'm somewhere now. I'll call you later. But start praying. No, by yourself, you yell a loud no. Why? You have the authority. And you need to be what? Brutal about it. Hey, Jesus said, see, a lot of us, a couple of, a lot of times, we are, we are negotiating when we should yell a loud no. Even Jesus, our Jesus, the first time the devil came, he said it is written. <laughs> Second time, he said it is written. The third time, he said, get thee behind me. But you, you are on the 1,374, it is written. Continue. Can the last it is written you said, can it be the last it is written? And you get into the realm of what? Get thee behind me. But hey, you are, it is written. You are having conversations around it is written. When you should yell a loud no. If you read the scriptures where the Bible says get thee behind, there was an exclamation which shows that it was a shout. Like, daddy. Oh, somebody say, get deep behind me. Get deep behind me. Get deep behind me. See, I'm saying this because I want you to be furious as you go home this night. It's not a coincidence that we're teaching about the believer's authority and pastor has given us a fantastic foundation. I want you to go home this night and say, ah, where is it? It is written. No, we've done that. We have getting to another level now of what? Satan, get lost. Regardless of the situation, there is power inside of you that will just make you get home and start listening out all those issues, those things that have taunted you, tried you, finished you, and say what? Get out. And like I said earlier on, you don't doubt in your mind. You say, devil, get your hand off my home. Devil, get your hand off my health. You say, devil, get your hand off my wife. Devil, get your hand off my business. Devil, get your hand off my job. Devil, get your hand off my body. And you do that, you know the next thing? You just go and sleep. And leave. See, you have spoken words into the head. Leave it for God to finish up. But hey, you are still wondering, how will God do it? They say, no, 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 no. Don't bother about that. That is not your work. Your own work is just to do what? Speak. Because see, authority does not happen without being spoken out. You need to be brutal. You need to be brutal. Enough of you being calm, friends. Enough. We've been, we've been jelenke about it enough. It's time to take our place as a believer and function in our authority. As I begin to close, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, in verse 5. We're going to read 5 to 7. And we're going to pray. Look at this. Bible says, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Next verse. Folly is said in great dignity and rich sit up, sit in low places. Sit up. Verse 7 is my focus. I have seen servants upon us, my God. 
I have sent servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. That is you. I've seen princes, those that should make authority, those that should, that, should, that should talk, and the next time the devil comes around, he catches fire. The next time he comes around, he gets electrocuted. You just know that, hey, devil has been here, and you see him on the floor. Look at it. He says, servants, princes, walk in. It's not in your, it's not in your position to be walking, sir. He says, let us make man in our image and let him have dominion. Do you think God, Jesus, could not have created everything? No. He said he wanted us to be a partaker of the creation story. And that was why Adam came. And the moment Adam came, it was time for Adam to also perfect some things. Question. All those things Adam created, I'm not going to go into the details of the first Adam and the second Adam, but there is an authority that you have been created to solve. But hey, we've relaxed so much. And that's why, what, as, I, as I begin to wrap up, we have, we have been relaxed so much. We've given the devil an opportunity so much. You know, it's, it's similar to when you have a roach or you have something in your house. If you don't kill the first one, they will just be like, ah, this place is, <laughs> this place is where we can be. Then they come. Has the devil built a mansion in your house? Has the devil built a mansion, roof it in your career? Has the devil built whatever it has built? But let me tell you something. Whatever the devil has built uh, this night... We are going to destroy it. We bulldoze it this night. Because the day we know, the day we realize, is the day we know that this must end. And this night, we draw the line. Eve saw the devil. Devil that Bible says that, that he's, been, he's been laid flat on the floor. The devil that Bible says has laid flat on the floor, we begin to converse with the devil that has been laid flat on the floor on the earth. We begin to converse. See, it's not just some people that, didn't, that can't speak English like you that you don't talk to. You also don't talk to the devil. Oh, let me show you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say glory to Jesus. Oh, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, quickly. Verse 16. Ezekiel 28, verse 16. And, you know, before I read that, see, there is this brutal that I was talking about earlier on that you just need to look at when in Ezekiel... The Lord told, you know, the Lord appeared to Ezekiel and the Bible says that prophesy to the dry bones. And what did Ezekiel say? <laughs> he said, they can't now, but <laughs> I prophesied as I was commanded. Listen, there is some level of doubt in that statement. Hope you know. But let me tell you something. You have authority not to even say I prophesy as I was commanded. You know, it's like, hey, in case my own word does not go, let me just hide under your own. I prophesy as I was commanded. See, you don't have to say, I prophesy as I was commanded. I prophesy as I have received. Look at this. By the multitude of thy merchandise, and this is Lucifer, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast seen that. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Next verse. Thine heart was filled up. Because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. Hey, I will lay thee before kings that they may do what? Behold thee. Who is the king here? You and I, sir. You and I. I will cast, can I get a protocol? Someone, anybody. I will cast thee before kings. Let me show you. Leave that scripture. Hey, 
I will cast thee. Can you do what I want you to do? I want you to lie flat. As in flat, flat. No, face front. Yes. Look at this. He says that the devil has been done what? I will cast thee to the ground and I will lay thee before kings. See, we are kings and we are just all around. Can I get kings? Let me get kings. Kings, kings, come. Kings, kings, come. If you're not a king, it's fine. But kings, come. Look at kings. See, it's been laid flat. Why? Before kings. And what do they do? Another scripture says they gaze around him. I think New King James. I will lay thee before kings that, look at it, that they might gaze at you. Listen to me. You are a king. You've been told and appointed to gaze at that problem. You've been told to gaze at that situation. But you know what you're doing? You're massaging it. You're looking at it. You're talking to it. And it's talking to you too. When you should be gazing at it. Hey, you've been told to dominate the earth. You have not been told to, to, to communicate. Do you say communicate in the scripture? He say, no, I've led you before kings uh, that they might what? Gaze at you. But you know what we are doing? We are talking to it. You can please get up. Please put your hands together for them. So they might gaze at you. Thank you, Jesus. As I close, I think I've said that like two times. <laughs> Hallelujah. Philippians 2 in verse 10, and we'll pray. Philippians 2 in verse 10, and we'll pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That at the name of Jesus. Hi. Hi. That at the name of Jesus, what would happen? Every knee should bow. Of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. What does that mean? They have no choice. Than to do what? Bow. And this is the believer's authority. At the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. There is nothing new that we're expecting Jesus to come and do. Everything has been done. It's just for us to take our place. You sat in the dark in your business for so long. You sat in the dark in your career for so long. It's time for you to do what? Flip the switch. Why? Because the power has been supplied. There is power. There is light. You just have to flip the switch. Bible says whatever we lose on earth, they are waiting for you to lose it. They're not going to, see, the angels, they, God is not going to come down to lose it for us. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And the way you take authority is by speaking. It's not by thinking. It's not by crying. It's not by talking to friends. It's by looking at the situation and speaking. The word of God. In the name of Jesus, I take my authority. Rise to your feet. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I take my authority. Bible says whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. I give you two minutes. You know what must stop. You know what must start. Listen to me. You are not negotiating Listen to me. You are not begging. You are making authority. You are decreeing. This night, have your two minutes to yourself. Have your two minutes to yourself. You are decreeing. You are not negotiating at all. 
all the power has been given to you. Are you online anywhere you are? Raise your voice and pray that this is the night where everything turns around. That this is the day where everything turns around. You know what the situation has been for so long. You've permitted the devil for so long, for so long, for so long, for so long. You've allowed it to deal with you. The Bible says, whatsoever we decree, Hey, Brisha Katamba Zukotoma. Hey, Bible says, wherever with the sole of my feet shall step upon her, that I possess it. I don't know what you need to possess in the spirit this evening. Take your authority. Take your authority. Tell the devil, live now. Tell the devil, live now. Over your finance, live now. Over your business, live now. Tell Satan, get out. Be bold about it. Believe as you pray. Be brutal about it. Flip on the switch. Flip on the switch. In that business, flip on the switch. In that career, flip on the switch. In that your marriage, flip on the switch. Your husband, call it forth. Flip on the switch. You've been in the dark for so long. There is power. There is power. There is power. Flip on the switch. I'm not seeing people taking authority. I'm not seeing people being bold. Take your place. Take your place. The devil, take your hand off. Over my child, take your hand off. Over my husband, take your hand off. Over my wife, take your hand off. Over my ministry, take your hand off. Devil, take your hand off. Oh, you have 30 more seconds. Command, command, command. We've been taught we can't say devil die. No. Spirits don't die. You say live. You tell the devil to relocate. To relocate. 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 Anywhere you are. If you are driving, pray. Devil, live. Leave my family alone. Leave my mother alone. Leave my father alone. Leave my career alone. Leave my business alone. You have the authority. You have the authority. Oh, come on, press some board this night. You have the authority. You have the power. Leave. Is there an L challenge you've been dealing with? Put your hand on it and say, Live now. Yes. Live now. Whatever it is, live now. Your business is still doing two million, two million. This is the fourth year, two million. Say, Devil, live now. Bible says the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter. Decree over yourself that from today my path shines brighter. From today forward only. From today, from today. From today, from today. Begin to call things forth. Oh, as you see, call it forth. Call forth a new business. Sir. Call forth a new job. You have the authority. It's on earth. And he says, whatever we decree on earth, call it forth. You're looking for a baby, call it forth. Looking for a husband, call it forth. Looking for a wife, call it forth. Call it forth. You have the power. Yes, you have the power. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you this evening. We thank you because we are stepping into our rightful position. And we know that from today, everything turns around. We know that our words from today, they go with the power that has been backed it up. In the name of Jesus. Come on, shout to the Lord. Give the Lord praise this evening. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you something. Kings don't talk anyhow. Are you with me? Kings don't do what? They don't talk anyhow. You don't, you don't hear kings lose talk. So... You are a king. I just showed you in Ezekiel. The devil is right there and you are a king gazing at it. 
Kings don't talk anyhow. The same mouth that you have used to receive power now. Don't use it to talk something else. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, are you excited about this month already? Hallelujah. You may please have your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Look at someone say, I will flip the switch. Oh, in fact, say, I have flipped the switch. I have flipped the switch. Flip the switch. Flip the switch. You know the way it is when you're just getting somewhere, you get home, you flip up the switch in the living room, you flip up the switch in the kitchen, in the room, you go into another room, you flip. Now in your career, you flip up the switch. In your business, flip up the switch. In your family, you, you just do what? Flip the switch. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Were you blessed this evening? Hallelujah. It's time to give. Are we ready to give? No, king, don't do like that. Are we ready to give? Glory be to Jesus. If you're ready to give, if you're giving your tithe, if you're giving a special seat, can you just rise on your feet? If you've given your tithe at home as well, you may please rise on your feet. If you are, you know, giving your offering, there should be an envelope in front of you, and you can make um, transfer to the details you see on your screen, and, you know, right behind me here. If you're in the physical auditorium, if you want to make use of your debit card, you may please just walk to the back, and um, you'll be able to do that. If you're giving your offering, can you just rise on your feet? And just begin to declare God's word. If you're giving your offering or you've done before now, can you just raise it up above your head and begin to speak God's word into your tithe? Speak God's word into your offering. So, you know, I think it's very powerful this evening. You might as well just want to sow a seed to what you have received into this evening. That Lord, that I take authority. I take authority. Let me tell you something. The first authority is when you even take authority over your finance. That Lord, I give you this because I am taking authority. I am taking authority. Thank you, Jesus. Speak God's word over it. Speak God's word over it. Speak God's word over it. Whatever you're, de you're expecting from God, just declare God's word over it. And I pray in the name of Jesus that every word over the title of the offering will be acceptable in the name of Jesus. I pray that everything that you're trusting God for, that the Lord will give you answers speedily in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. You may please have your seat. We'll be giving shortly if this is your first time in avesta's international christian center the Gadda campus or if you're online as well if this is your first time in avesta's can you just wave at me wherever you are if you're online there are going to be details on the screen you might as well just scan it as well but if you're here can you just wave at me if this is your first time in avesta's international christian center the Gadda campus on a Wednesday, can you just wave at me? Come on, wave, wave, wave. Let's show them so much love. I can see a young man there. I can see a lady there. Come on, keep waving, keep waving, keep waving. Keep waving, keep waving, keep waving, keep waving. You're going to get a card. Come on, keep waving. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We're not a church that stalks you. We just want to share, you know, details about what God is doing in our lives with you. Come on, keep waving, keep waving. If this is your first time, don't be shy. Come on, keep waving. Keep waving, keep waving, keep waving, keep waving, keep waving. Church, let's show them so much love. Let's show them so much love. Yes, yes, yes. We appreciate you. We know you could have been somewhere else, but you are here this evening. This is Avestas where we are what? Chain lives. And we say something and which we know that give us three to six months of your life and you will be a chain life. I want to specially invite you for any of our Sunday services. We have in this Bagheda campus, we have four services every Sunday. First service at 7 a.m., second service at 8.45, third service at 10.30, and I think the best service at 12.15. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Can you just rise? Okay, before we do that, we just want to welcome you in a special way at the count of three. And I know you're going to like it. At the count of three. One, two, three, go. You're welcome. So you can say we love you so much and we'd just like to see you again and again. Please fill the card you've been given with accurate details and we'll surely get back to you. Can we rise on our feet as we give? Hallelujah. Is there a good time to give God praise?